Hello, calculus kids. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean. Today's lesson is going to be on selecting procedures to be able to help us find some limits. So when I say selecting procedures, it means all of the things we've already been doing with algebraically, how to manipulate it, uh, like factoring and canceling stuff, direct substitution, all that type of thing. And then on top of that, we'll have two more things today. So today's lesson, we'll talk about rationalizing stuff with fractions. Uh, so things that have radicals inside the fraction. And then the other thing will be complex fractions. So those are two that are fairly challenging, but I have tried to make the ones we're going to do in this packet and in this lesson not too difficult, and they kind of follow the same pattern here. So let's start off with how to rationalize. F remember, first we just tried direct substitution. And if we were to take this limit as x approaches 5 and go ahead and just plug it into the x, you'd end up with 0 over 0. So that's not going to work. That's indeterminate form, which we'll talk about later in the year, how to how's a special way to deal with those. So this is going to be um, where we're going to multiply top and bottom by a particular fraction. So we're going to set up this fraction here. Now let me show you, this is what we will do. a minus b times a plus b. This is just to remind you some things that we have done in the past. If I were to multiply the whole thing out, just distribute the a, distribute the negative b, then we'd get this long thing, and then you simplify that, and it becomes a squared minus b squared. Or, if you can remember, difference of squares. This is the difference of squares. If we, if we factor this, we go back to a minus b times a plus b. Okay, so th these two things I'm going to call conjugate. Okay, if I have a minus b, this is the conjugate of a minus b. Or if I have the a plus b, then the a minus b is the conjugate. So what I'm doing is I'm going to multiply by what's called the conjugate or the other half of the difference of squares. So this is my a and this is my b. So I take the square root of x plus 4, and then I add, because here it was subtraction, so now I will add a 3. And now if I do that to the numerator, I have to do that to the denominator, so I have an x plus 4 plus 3. And then let's go to the next line, so I have the limit as x approaches 5, and then I'm going to have this long fraction. On top, we, we don't have to go through the steps of multiplying this all out, because remember, we know that eventually, oops, disappeared. There we go. Eventually we're going to have this a squared minus b squared. So I just jump straight to that and I get this a squared, which just means it's x plus 4. So that's the radical is just gone, the square root's gone. And then minus, and then it's b squared. So minus b squared in this case is 9. And then what do I have on bottom? On bottom I'm going to have x minus 5 times this long thing of x plus 4 plus 3, close parentheses. All right, so if you can see, and think one step ahead here, 4 minus 9 is going to be x minus 5. This x minus 5 is going to cancel with this x minus 5. So then we will have the limit as x approaches 5, and then we have 1 over the square root of x plus 4 plus 3. Three. And now we can use direct substitution. And it's okay, we can plug the 5 in there, and we're going to get 1 over the square root of 5 plus 4 is 9, plus 3. Square root of 9 is 3, so I have 1 over 3 plus 3, which is 6. So 1 sixth. And that is our answer. So let's try this again. This time we have the radical on bottom, uh, but I'm going to have you actually... I want you to pause the video because I want you to try this one on your own. It's the same steps, it's just this time you multiply by the conjugate of what's on bottom because that's where the radical is. So give this a shot and I'll have my work appear in just a few seconds. So here we have our answer of negative 6. This one had a few tricky things that were going on. The first one would be when you have this difference of squares here, the 3 squared is 9 minus this thing squared. That, that negative, the minus, it needs to distribute through the parentheses. So you have to set up the parentheses there. That's how you get this thing on bottom. And then the trick here was you have to factor out a negative 1. If you factor out a negative 1, pull that negative 1 out, that's the same thing as saying x minus 10 right there. And then there, x minus 10 and that x minus 10 cancel, but I still have this negative one on bottom. All right, and so that's where our answer comes from for number two. You can pause that and look through that my work there if you need to. Number three, now we'll do complex fractions. There's a, 
actually a way that I like to teach is faster to do this, but I found uh, it's it's multiplying both top and bottom by what's called the greatest common factor of the denominators. And it's really fast. It's just, I found that it's so confusing for kids. So I have decided the way we're gonna do this is you just have to treat this by getting the same denominator. See, if I plug in a zero right now, I get zero on top. And then I get this negative one fourth plus one fourth. I get zero over zero. That doesn't work. Okay, I can't, I don't know the limit. So we're going to get common denominators between this thing and this thing. So let's see if you can follow along. I'm going to give this denominator a little x minus four right there. If I give that to the bottom, so it's now four times x minus four, then I have to multiply the top of this by x minus four. Notice what I'm talking about is just this little fraction one fourth. I'm not talking about the x on top, just this fraction. All right, so now th there's that. And now this one, I need to give the numerator and denominator the same thing. I'm going to multiply this whole thing by a little four. And this one on top by a little four. So now what that does is it gives me a four and an x minus four on bottom. So now I'll rewrite the line. What do I have? I'm gonna have the limit as x approaches zero of x over um, okay, so now I have 4 over 4 times x minus 4. And then I'll say plus, and then on top of this numerator, I have x minus 4. And on bottom, I have a 4 and an x minus 4. Okay, well, this is the same denominator, so I can just plug these together. And then I get the limit. I'm going to show more steps on this one than I would normally show, uh, just because it's the very first one that we're doing. So then we have uh, x on top. And then all over, this is going to be 4 plus x minus 4. So those 4s are going to end up canceling. I have an x there all over 4 times x minus 4. So the reason that disappeared, these two denominators are the same denominator. So it just smashes together, these two fractions. Okay, and then we're almost done here simplifying. When you have a complex fraction, a, a fraction inside of a fraction like this, remember fractions just mean division. This whole line here just means divide, x divided by that fraction. So we don't divide fractions. That's just too hard, too hard. I'm gonna take this X and instead of dividing by this, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. So I flip the whole thing over and make it four times X minus four all over X. And now that's really nice because that X cancels, that X cancels. And then we can just do our direct substitution, plug in the zero here. You have four times negative four. The answer is negative 16. There we go. All right, so now let's do the next one. So it's very similar. I'm not going to show quite as many steps on this one, but it's the same idea. So we're going to give this one an x plus 3 quantity squared. And if I do that in the denominator, I must also do that in the numerator. So x plus 3 quantity squared. And then this one, same idea. I'm going to give it a 9 on bottom. And this one, I'll give a 9 on top. And then I'm not doing anything with this x. Okay, let's rewrite this. Okay, right here. So I'm gonna show you, this is gonna be minus, so it's nine minus this thing. So I'm gonna write a parentheses, and instead of x plus three quantity squared, I'm going to multiply that out. That gives me an x squared plus six x plus nine. Okay, that's multiplying out this thing, it's just foiling it or distributing x plus three times x plus three. And I'll, you'll see why I needed to do that here in a second. And then we get this all over, what's the de denominators? Nine times x plus three quantity squared. This is getting small and I'm being sloppy, I apologize. And then all over x. Okay, so now we can clean this up a little bit. The limit as x approaches zero. Let's see, the numerator, that negative is going to distribute through to all three of these places here. All right, so that, that's why this nine this nine is going to cancel with this nine because it's subtracting the nine. A negative x squared minus six x, that's that first numerator over nine times x plus three quantity squared. Now, instead of dividing by this x, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. And the reason that's important is because you might be able to see this numerator here. If you factor out a one single x, if I factor out an x, that becomes negative x minus six, and then that x will cancel with that x. All right, so now we go to limit as x approaches zero of, uh, what do we have here? Numerator is negative x minus six, 
denominator is nine times x plus three quantity squared. And then we should be able to just plug in that zero now. Plug it, direct substitution. This is negative six over. And then what do we have here? Nine on the outside, zero there. So three squared is also a nine. And before we multiply nine times 90, 81, why don't we try to reduce this? And then we'll have a nice simplified answer. So this becomes two over three. So our answer is negative two over three times nine, 27. There we go. So this was a little bit confusing. There's a lot of algebra steps going on with this. A lot of things that we did in algebra two. So you have to kind of take your time, make sure you're precise with your work, look back and pay attention to what you're doing. Now, as you go through the practice, you'll have some of these problems as well of what we as what we have already been doing with factoring and direct substitution. So you just kind of have to select which procedure is the best for that particular problem. So remember, direct substitution is a ton faster if you can do it. All right, that's it. Now rock that mastery check and I'll see you back in the next one.